The National Severe Storms Laboratory in Norman, Oklahoma is one of seven NOAA research labs. Scientists at NSSL study weather radar, severe thunderstorms, and winter weather in an effort to improve warnings and forecasts. Dr. Lou Wicker has been at NSSL since 1999 and is currently the chief scientist for what is called the Warn on Forecast program there. Welcome to Weather World, Lou. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Why don't you bring us up to speed then on this program? Uh, you've been working on it since 2011. What are its goals and what are, what are some of its accomplishments so far? Well, uh, the goal was to see if we could extend tornado warnings and other severe hazardous weather threat warnings to uh, more than 15 minutes, which is sort of like for tornado warnings right now, we're sort of at a plateau. And so the idea was, can we actually use storm scale models and high resolution data sets to actually extend that out towards an hour and, and that way provide uh, perhaps a lot more lead time for different types of needs for our society. So you mentioned sort of this numerical modeling of thunderstorms. Mm -hmm. we, we sometimes show the computer models here on Weatherworld. We'll show the GFS, we'll show mm -hmm. the European model. What's, what's the fundamental difference in the modeling approach between the modeling that you're doing and those models that we show here on the show? Well, the models that you often see for TVs are the large scale models that just show sort of the, what we call the synoptic scale features, very large scale, hundreds of miles across, et cetera. We're doing modeling on the scale of a mile, um, where we're trying to resolve and try to understand the behavior and predict the behavior of individual thunderstorm cells. Those are the ones that produce the tornadoes, those are the ones that produce the large hail, those are the ones that produce the strong winds. And so we're trying to actually predict these very fine scale details. When it comes to that kind of numerical modeling, what's the more difficult problem to capture? Is it what we would call initiation, that is, will thunderstorms form in the right. first place? Or is it once thunderstorms form, how they will evolve and move? Well, we actually try to avoid the first problem because <laughs> that's the hard one. <laughs> Initiation is, is a very difficult problem. Um, and when the, fork, the Warn on Forecast program was first uh, thought about and, and sort of outlined, um, we decided that we would wait for radar echoes. At the Severe Storms Lab, we're expert in, in weather radar, Doppler weather radar, polarimetric radar. And so it seemed logical to sort of start at that point and move forward from there so we wouldn't have to necessarily tackle what is actually a very important problem, but it's a very hard problem. It's sort of the next level problem. Understood. What has surprised you the most as you dig into the details of this numerically modeling thunderstorms? Um, wh what's the biggest challenge there? Is it the initiation problem? No, I actually think the, the simple fact of the matter is everybody knows that weather forecasts are not accurate all the time at these large scales. And at the smaller scales, we're actually trying to predict very much these very tiny details. And frankly, our models are not accurate enough. We need a lot more uh, research and effort into understanding because everything matters. Well, we have the saying that everything matters at these scales. The large scale matters, the details of where the clouds were in the morning matters, uh, the details of what's going on with little moisture variations uh, you know, on the scale of cities matter. And so until we really get all those details right, I think we're gonna run up against sort of what we would call a predictability barrier or limit where we'll be able to do some improvements, but at some point we're not gonna make any progress until we fix some of those things. Let's just talk a little bit about tornadoes. I mean, it's fairly well known that the tornadoes that do most of the damage are the violent ones, mm -hmm. the ones that get rated EF4, EF5. Right. How close are we to being able to identify all or nearly all of the thunderstorms that will go on to produce those really nasty tornadoes? Well, I mean, we already identify them very well. I mean, tornado warnings for these types of storms are actually pretty good. Um, and so, in, the, in, in what we find is those storms are often in very strongly forced environments. So, our, as I'll we've sort of come to find out, our model is pretty well in trying to do predict these longer lived entities. Um, it picks them up and it f moves them along at the right speed and direction. It's the sort of in-between events um, that we probably are gonna have problems with because it's the weird forcings from the larger scale uh, weather is weaker and it's a lot more on just the local details of things. And so um, we, we, there's a lot of challenges there. The weaker right. tornadoes are just gonna be the weaker tornadoes and hopefully um, the warnings are gonna be good enough for that. But it's there's just a variety of different phenomena we're trying to capture. So when the large scale pattern is favorable for nasty tornadoes, we usually pinpoint it. But when the, the small scale details right. are the ones, that's when it becomes more difficult. I, I would argue that while it was, the environment was there, Joplin was an excellent example in uh, 2011, a very unfortunate event where it was an extreme high event with high impact. 
tons of fatalities, unfortunately. And but that I would have not guessed that environment would have produced that kind of event. And that's the kind of sort of in between where it's not quite strongly forced, but there's a lot of cape and gotcha. shear and all that. So let's finish. We just have a few seconds left. A few years ago, you gave a title with a very provocative uh, talk with a very provocative title: "Severe Storm Numerical Weather Prediction: The Good, the Bad, and a Possible Future." So let's go there. What, what possible future were you talking about? Well, I think within about five to 10 years, we'll be predicting um, convective cells uh, on an hourly basis, much like we do with some of our numerical, but with, I think with much more robust uh, numerical weather prediction testing, uh, ensemble data simulation. We'll not only be predicting what's going to happen, but we'll hopefully predict the certainty of what's going to happen. Okay. And that's a very important uh, aspect of weather prediction that's, I think, coming to be, play not only just for uh, thunderstorm scales, but also for the large scales. We have to predict what we think will happen, but we'll also predict hopefully how sure we are that's going to happen. And I think hopefully the public will be able to integrate both of those pieces of information in their decision making and their expectations of what's going to happen with the weather today. Very good. Dr. Lou Wicker, National Severe Storms Lab. Thanks for joining us on Weather. Thanks for having me. And we'll be back in a moment with a recap of the short range forecast.